Hello everybody and welcome to the first video in the free motion challenge quilting along machine quilting with rulers. I'm Angela Walters from Quilting is My Therapy. In this video series, I'm going to show you how to use different rulers of all types and show you some of my favorite designs. This video is going to be a doozy. But what can I say? We have a lot of stuff to cover. So go ahead and grab the downloadable quilting diagrams and tip sheet. You can find the link in the description box below and let's get going. In this video, we're gonna talk all about quilting with straight edge rulers. I'm gonna give you tips for selecting the perfect ruler for you and show you how to use them to create some of my favorite quilting designs. I mean, these designs are like my children. Well, I mean, if my children were quilting designs, but even if you don't like them, each design will still teach a technique. So we're gonna learn a lot right off the bat. The reason we're starting with straight edge rulers is because I feel they're the easiest to use. The point of contact between the foot and the ruler doesn't change and that gives you just one less thing to think about. Before we get to the designs though, let's talk about what to look for in a ruler. Now you know there's plenty of rulers out there on the market and not every ruler is meant for every person. And you're gonna hear me say that a lot through this video series. Here's a couple things to consider. If you're working in a smaller area, maybe you have a smaller throat on your sewing machine or just not quite a lot of room, aim for a shorter ruler. If you have a large space and more area, go ahead and go for a slightly larger ruler. But you don't need one that's really, really long because no matter how long your ruler is, you're only gonna be quilting in between your fingertips. The longer rulers do help because it helps me see where I'm gonna end up, helps me project where that line's gonna go, it might even be a straight edge that's part of another ruler, and that's great too. If you have a ruler with a lot of different shapes, you just need one side to be straight. Be sure to look for reference lines on your rulers as well. We're gonna be using those a lot through these designs to help space out our echo lines, to create those dot to dot shapes. So the more reference lines, the better. Since I quilt on a sewing machine and a long arm, I actually have two straight edge rulers that I use a lot. For the most part, I use the slim ruler because it's hand sized and I can really get in and around things. I also like the Handy Quilter Straight Edge Ruler because it's a little bit longer and it helps me when I'm working with bigger blocks. But ultimately, you just need a straight edge ruler. It doesn't matter how big. If you're very new to machine quilting with rulers, I've put together a separate video that shows them how to use it on your sewing machine and one that shows you how to use it on your long arm. So be sure to check out those videos as a reference. The first design we're gonna work through is a scrambled lines design. This design is all about texture and adding a beautiful pattern to the background areas of your quilt. The technique that we're gonna learn is echoing. This is a design that works best in larger areas. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that space and break it into little chunks. This is gonna make the quilting much more manageable. We're gonna create little sections and then fill them in with straight lines. So let's get started. I have my much larger area all in here. So I'm gonna start out by quilting the sides of a square. And I'm gonna quilt my line vertical and horizontal. Now here's the thing. Don't worry about the size of the box. It doesn't matter. It's the spacing between the lines that we put in it that will create the density. So far, so good, right? I've got my four sides. Two of them are quilted and two of them are the edge of my area. I'm gonna start filling them in with vertical and horizontal lines. And we're gonna do that by traveling and echoing. So traveling is quilting along a previously quilted line and echoing is quilting that same line but a space distance away. So I'm gonna back up along the line I've just quilted and then quilt a vertical line that echoes the side of my area. This is where reference lines come in really handy because this is gonna help make sure that my ruler is straight to my area. Now to create my next vertical line, I'm gonna travel along the edge of the area and then echo the line I've just quilted all the way to the edge. At a random point, whenever you're feeling comfortable, you can change directions. So when I'm ready to do that, back up along the line I've just quilted and then quilt horizontally. All right, let's do another horizontal line. Travel along the edge and echo. Now what's awesome about this design is that the lines are gonna get shorter and shorter. So it'll get easier and easier as you go. Let's go vertical now. Okay, so I know it's not looking like much now, but it's gonna look really cool here in a little bit. You just have to trust me on this. Now there really is no rhyme or reason to the changing directions. Just change directions as you feel like you should. But if you prefer more of a rule, then you can say, well, I'll do three vertical and two horizontal. I don't know, it doesn't matter what, just make sure you fill in the whole area. Now 
Now let's take a look at my first section. In a perfect world, we would end up in the corner of our area because that's how we're gonna transition into our next section. But if you find yourself not in the right spot, just travel to that point and get to a corner, any corner, so we can make our next section. Doesn't matter how you get there, just get there. Now that I finished that first one, I'm gonna quilt my second section. And since I ended up at the edge of my area, I'm gonna use stitching in the ditch to create my next box. It doesn't have to be the same size as the first one, it just needs to be a box. There's my next little box that I'm gonna fill in with the horizontal and vertical lines. And this is where we'll start to see the magic happen. The random placement of lines are gonna to start to create a secondary pattern that looks really neat. It'll look like you took the time to think it all through, but really, the more random, the better. Now sometimes it might be a little tricky to see where you're going, so if you're not sure if your ruler is lined up exactly right, make sure you use the reference lines on your ruler to help keep it straight, kind of lining them up along those previously quilted lines. And whenever you're ready to change direction, just backtrack along the line you just quilted, and then quilt in the next direction. And if you're feeling adventurous, you don't have to always use a ruler for those short lines. You can just wing it and get it pretty close. Although I'm pretty sure right now some of you are rolling your eyes. And my next section is done, and you can start to see that secondary pattern come out. This is one of those examples where the real world didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to. I didn't end up on a corner, I ended up towards the center. I'm just gonna travel along and get to that corner. Doesn't matter what you do, just get to the corner. All right, next section. By now, you know the drill, right? We're gonna fill it in with horizontal and vertical lines. Now, once you get comfortable with the idea of quilting those straight-ish lines, then you can start thinking about other things. Namely, how do you make sure that you end up in the corner that you wanna end up at? Let's pretend that you're working within the section and you want to end at this corner or somewhere kind of close. To help ensure that that happens, you want to quilt everything in that box besides that. You want to save that corner for last. So at this point, I'm not going to travel down and quilt a vertical line over here because that's going to block off my corner. Instead, I'll quilt another vertical line and then maybe some horizontal lines. If you've ever mopped a floor before, you probably have already done this. You know, when you're mopping the floor and you know you have to get out the door, what do you do? You mop everything else besides around the door. So that's basically what we're doing here. But again, if that's too much to think about right now, then just let it go and you can come back to that later once you get more comfortable with quilting with your straight rulers. And I'm just gonna keep doing that, quilting my sections and filling them in very much how I like to quilt my quilts. I like to make my little sections and fill them in and then move on. The second design we're going to learn with our straight edge ruler is going to be the square spiral. Now this is a design that really draws attention to the center of the block. The technique we're going to learn here is quilting diagonal lines. Before I get started, I'm going to add a couple echo lines to make this space a little bit more manageable. Of course, this is completely optional. It's just a little trick that you can use to make those bigger areas a little bit easier to handle especially if you're working with blocks on point or a smaller threaded sewing machine. Once I'm done with my echoing, it's time to quilt my square spiral design in the space I have left. Now I can start from any corner and I'm gonna look to the next corner and past it by about a half of an inch or so. And then I'm gonna quilt a diagonal line that goes right to it. I'm not really worrying if it lands on there perfectly or not. Now once I'm there, I'm gonna repeat. I'm gonna go to the next corner I'm gonna go past it about a half of an inch and quilt a diagonal line to that point. I'm gonna do the same thing on my next point. The problem is it's behind me and it's a little difficult to see. That's why I'm gonna position the ruler, get it as close as I can, and then once it comes into view, I reposition my ruler if necessary. And now that I can see a little bit better, I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna kinda of just check it out, make sure it's looking pretty good, and then continue on. And there we have the first three lines of our design. Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna to go to the next corner and we're gonna go past it, except this time I'm gonna stop at that previously quilted line. There aren't any lines that cross each other in this design, so once you hit a quilted line, it's time to stop. All right, so it's coming together. I'm starting to see that twisting effect come out. And now I'm gonna keep doing that, going to my next corner, but past it and continuing on until I get to the center. Okay, so this is the first time we're seeing diagonal lines in this challenge, but don't let that trip you up. You're basically just gonna position the ruler where you want the line of quilting to end up. 
on your sewing machine, you can work from any side of the foot. So as you're quilting, take your time and see what position feels better for you. This design is gonna force you to quilt those diagonal lines in all different directions. And even if you just quilt this one block, you're gonna be a lot more comfortable with quilting those lines. So take your time and have fun with it. Now let's take this over to the long arm and finish it out and see how quilting with a ruler is a little different. Quilting diagonal lines on a long arm is a little bit more tricky. Basically, I have two sets of wheels, one rolling horizontal and one vertical, and to quilt that diagonal line, I've got to engage them at the same time. It's kind of like quilting a diagonal line with an Etch-a-Sketch. So every once in a while, you might get a bobble, but just keep going, it'll be fine. This particular design is going to challenge you to quilt in diagonal lines in all different directions. When you're quilting on the long arm, you're not going to have the ability to change the position of your quilt. So you're going to need to get comfortable quilting those lines every which way. And at any point when I decide, you know what, I think this looks great and I'm tired of quilting those straight lines, I could just stop at the end of a line and then find another corner across from it and quilt a diagonal line to that corner. It just kind of closes it off and I think makes it look finished. And there you can see the finished design. The last design we're going to talk through is dot to dot quilting. In dot to dot quilting, we're connecting reference points on the quilt to create these intricate looking designs. And if you have been a part of the free motion challenge quilting along for a little bit, you may remember the dot to dot free motion challenge from earlier. But the technique that we're going to learn here is landing on an actual spot. So here's the thing we have to consider. There's a quarter inch in between the edge of the foot and the needle. So sometimes landing on that spot isn't always as easy as it seems but I've got some tips and tricks that might make it a little easier. So let's get to it. I'm gonna start at one corner, it doesn't matter which one, and I'm gonna quilt a diagonal line to about a half inch inside the next corner. This would be kind of like quilting the first line of our square spiral, except I'm gonna stop before I get to the edge. Now the, here comes the moment of truth. I wanna quilt another diagonal line that ends right at this corner. But here's the thing, if I put my ruler directly on that corner, I'm actually going to end up about a quarter of an inch away, so I'm going to have to take that into account when I'm positioning my ruler. Now here's how I do that. I start on the point I want to end up on, so I go ahead and establish where that is, and then I back it up by a quarter of an inch or so, and then quilt along the ruler. And then as I'm moving into that point, if I need to, I can make some adjustments. Now I'm going to do it again. The next corner behind here, about a half inch or a quarter inch or so. All right, now my next corner is right there. Another option you have for hitting those points is to look for a ruler that has extensions on the other side. So with SID or other rulers like this, what these extensions are doing are giving you a reference line on the other side of your foot. This first reference line that's just past the edge of this ruler will show me where my quilting line will end up. So if I line that first reference line up with that corner, that will tell me that's the angle I want to have. And that will also help me get to that point. And I have my first dot to dot design. Now we're gonna do it again from the other corners to create just a little bit more intricate looking shape. So I'm gonna do a little stitching along the seam to get to that point. Now that I'm at this point, I can do the same thing going to the next corner, but not touching. Now the next point that I'm gonna connect with is actually behind my machine. So one of the benefits of having a sewing machine is that I can easily twist the quilt a little bit and bring it into view. Then quilt to that point. And I'm gonna do the same on the other side returning to the starting point. Now I'm gonna quickly demo that on the long arm. This goes together pretty much the same as it does on a sewing machine. The, the biggest difference is that you can't twist the quilt if you can't see one of the corners. So just take your time, reposition your ruler, and get it as close as you can. Now this is also another point where the extensions will come in handy on your ruler. Just travel along the edge and do it again. So the first corner is not gonna to touch, and then the next one is, and then I'm gonna finish it out. That is a lot of stuff to talk about in one video. I'm so glad that you stuck around. Now, are you ready for your challenge? If you're quilting along with me on the custom panel for the challenge, try quilting the designs we've just learned on your panel in the areas highlighted in red. If you have questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I try to pop in every once in a while and see how it's going. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. That'll help other quilters find it, and I do appreciate that. For all the links to the products that you've seen, the quilting diagrams, as well as the other videos, check out the description box below. I'll see you next week where we'll talk about wavy rulers and creating some beautiful textures on our quilts. Happy quilting!